And let me tell you a little bit about what I remember, to be honest with you. Uh, we had a get the ball back situation at the end where we put 207. Um, the offense is up by one. Defense got to get the ball back, obviously. And then whatever's left over, whether you have one timeout, two timeouts, whatever you do, you punt the ball if you can if you can get the ball back. And then the twos go out and they run uh, a two minutes situation uh, with the offense at that point being down a point and trying to go get the field goal. Uh, in both of those situations where it was one started and uh, started in a, a lead on offense, uh, both those situations of defense uh, won both of those situations, which, which was, was good to see, to be honest with you. I'm not rooting for the offense or defense, but I thought the defense played a lot better today than they did last week, which is um, – a lot of times you say that and you, you go, well, the offense didn't play very well. That's that's not the case. I just thought the defense made more plays, uh, made the close plays uh, more uh, this week than they did last week. Uh, we still have some details. You know, we, I think we've got a pretty good football team. Uh, when you have problems on the football team is when they won't run to the ball, uh, when they won't strain on their blocks when you don't have talent to throw or catch it, when you don't have talent to cover somebody. Uh, those are when you have problems on a football. When you have guys that don't want to be on the team and are, 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 are problems in the locker room. That's when you have problems in a locker room or in a, on a team, and we don't have that. So everything we, we are doing, we can fix if we have, and it's just the little details we, you know, we had uh, some offsides on the offensive line. We we had a hard time on offense protecting uh, at times. Uh, there was a lot of good things as well on offense, but uh, those details, uh, we got beat deep a couple of times on some balls. Uh, those details, uh, technique and things that we've got to get better at, but we don't have a problem with unity and we don't have a problem with chasing the ball and straining on offense. So. I think we're going to continue to get better. This is kind of with school starting. Uh, this is kind of where we want it to be. Um, we're a little beat up on the offensive line. Uh, Kudis ran with the two centers today, which Kudis is really our sixth center, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, but he did a nice job. Had a couple of snap problems. But uh, other than that, he did a pretty good job. So with that, uh, if you have questions, I'll – try to answer them as best I can. Coach, um, just your thoughts on, on KJ's play and Malik too, just quarterbacks in general after KJ. I can't remember. Um, Kyle, help me here. I, I can't remember an interception. I don't think we had an interception. Uh, the, the things that we had, you know, we had some balls on the ground as far as the snaps. Um, but I thought KJ controlled the offense. You know, if you he's your leading rusher on the team and you never run him <laughs> in camp you know what i mean now he's doing his reads and he can run if anybody's even halfway close to him the play's dead and all that i think you're going to see a much different offense what i'm what i'm excited about is he can throw and we we can catch and we're still when we hand the ball off we're still having success and uh he's just getting better all the time he really is and i know probably we all say that but He's getting better. He's throwing the ball better. He's taking care of the ball, and uh, everybody on the field knows that he's 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 the guy. And uh, and so I've been really proud of him. He's 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 night and day from what he was confidence-wise a year ago. Uh, at at this time, we really didn't know what we had to be honest with you, Trey. You know, going into the Rice game last year, but we do this year. Well, I've got them right here, uh, and it it looked like uh, Sanders. He had a 30-yard catch. Um, you know, some of these were down in the red area. The backs caught a touchdown. Bakke, that was really a good play there. Matter of fact, Landers caught a touchdown. McAdoo caught a touchdown. Um, he had another 25-yard uh, catch. Um, 
KJ had a touchdown run. Thompson had a 25-yard catch from KJ. Rocket had a 15-yard run. Those are things I, you know, Keytron, Keytron cut a 25-yard touchdown from Malik. It was a really good play. Um, I thought sack-wise, I know Landon, Landon Jackson was all around the quarterback all day. Dorian Gerald uh, flashed again. Um, uh, I tell you who made really a couple of really good plays was Jordan Dominic. He made some really – he showed his speed, you know, um, on, on the uh, get the ball back. We were outside of him on offense, the quarterback, and he, you know, he ran him down. Whether he tackled him or not, I don't know. He tagged him. But uh, he's got some speed. He's really come a long way in, in two weeks. Uh, but that's we, – we, we kicked the ball well um, today, Cam – uh, and Bates both kicked the ball well, uh, punted the ball well, uh, protected well. Um, going two weeks into it, I think I think we're in pretty good shape, but that's what Kyle wrote down. So if it's wrong, then you can get on him. Coach, you started the first week of August. Two weeks from today, you play Cincinnati. Are the receivers – did you ever think that the receivers would be where they're at today when you first started in August? No. I mean, uh, no. And that's a lot to do with their coaching with Coach Guyton, but also has a lot to do with them, too. Um, you can't just say, well, we went in the portal and we got Landers and, and, and Hazelwood because uh, Jaden Wilson's better. Now, he's beat up right now, too, but Jaden Wilson's better. Uh, Warren Thompson is a lot better than what he was last year, and Keytron Jackson. So uh, the strength coach and the way that they prepare, and just the kids who they are. But I never would have thought Warren Thompson would be the player that he is right now from a year ago. But that's credit to him, no, to answer your question. But Where are you at the cornerback position? I know it's corners – the. Uh... Where are you at in that right now? Yeah, uh, there's still a battle there with uh, Malik and and uh, and and Nudie and Day Day. Really, maybe Day Day, Malik, Nudie. Uh, obviously, Hudson Clark is Hudson's really played the best of all those guys throughout the first two weeks. Um, and then Kyrie Johnson is playing better, uh, playing a lot better actually, and. Uh, uh, Kiwan Parker would be the other guy in that mix who's uh, getting better. I think he'll be in uh, really help us on special teams uh, as well. M most all those guys will help us, but that's kind of where we're at. We we have a, kind of a three three guy battle there with close four and five, but um, you know with Nudie being close in that. But right now we walked out there today with Day Day and and uh, Hud Hudson Clark starting for us. Coach, it sounds like last week there were a lot of explosive plays from the offense. Maybe not so much the no. scrimmage. Is that yeah. just a product of better play by the defense, or how yeah. do you assess that? Well, I thought we I thought we pressured the uh, the quarterback better, you know, uh, today. Uh, contested balls, uh, we were better on defense than we were uh, last week, you know. Um, and we got big wide outs, you know, but they were in better position, I thought. Than they were. Um, you never know. We we did break a few runs. You don't know how far they would go, really. Uh, but broke a few there. I'm sure we would have run them down on defense and played in the next first down. But there was a few openings in there. But um, overall, I think it's just because the defense played better. I don't I don't really feel like the offense didn't play well. I just think uh, our defense made. Uh, key plays in there to get off the field. And you mentioned last week that Kutas was a guy you thought could make a push for the two deep, and you mentioned Kutas, Pat, or Kutis. Oh, uh, Kutis, yeah. Yeah, he uh, played center for you today. We've seen him at left and right guard. Just he's kind been of, everywhere. Yeah, what, what what have been your impressions of him being a guy that wasn't even an early enrollee? Well, that's hard, you know. I remember I had Andrew Thomas there. It came in at Georgia, um, end up starting at right tackle by the first game it's hard it's harder when you're playing him in several positions now we've gotten in problems with some injuries so we've had to move him um, if he was just at one position 
right now it would probably be left guard uh, in battling there with St. John would probably be where he would be but and that's where he was and then uh, we got beat up a little bit with street on the ankle and not 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 long term but uh, so he had to move in there to center because uh, we've been the offensive line is probably the one spot that's that's uh, been beat up the most so far. But he's done a great job. If you want to teach somebody how to play O-line, put him at center because he has to know everything at that point. He doesn't have to just know his spot. He has to know everything. He's kind of the quarterback up there. And uh, I've always thought that that would be a great place to, to play your what you consider one of your best or your best young kid because he has to learn the game in there. And uh, he's done a really good job. He, and he's starting on some special teams for us too. We're going to travel him and expect him to be in the two deep at some point. KJ said yesterday he wanted to work on getting the ball out quicker. Um, did you feel like he had success with that today? And then how have you seen his accuracy improve? Yeah, I, you know, he's done that all spring, you know, all fall, excuse me. And uh, uh, I think getting out of the, getting the ball out of your hands uh, quicker is has everything to do with knowing where to go to the ball pre-snap and going with the ball, whereas reads are much faster if one's covered. I'm going there, but, uh, but I don't know. You'd have to ask him, but I think a lot of times it was, I'm going to go to one read, and if it's not open, I'm going to find Burks, you know, which has worked out pretty good, you know. but. Uh, this year, I think he understands coverages and the looks and all that. It's, it's, therefore, he's getting the ball. And he's got a quicker release, but I think that's why he's throwing the ball faster. Fortin had to play the day today when he, he threw one, I don't know, kind of mm -hmm. sidearm through for a little five-yard touchdown. And uh, he now he's got a quick, quick release, you know. But uh, KJ's doing a good job with that. I think it's just he's more comfortable. Are you getting any clarity on – uh, kick and punt returns, or is it still kind of like last time we talked? There's still a lot of guys. Well, there. not totally. You know, I think AJ. Somebody remind me. I forgot about him last time. I think AJ Green, Landers, um, on the kickoffs. Uh, AJ Landers, um, Hazelwood still doing it back there. We've kind of taken Slusher off of that. Um, Punt returns, probably 14, 16, you know. Um, those are the two guys. Four, it's probably 14's job right now, you know, Bryce's job right now. But Sategna's catching them, and Sategna's also returning kickoffs too. Uh, obviously, when they're that, when when you talk about them, you're, you're, they're obviously moved up in the depth chart where you think they're going to play at another position as well. And I think he's – He's earned that at, at the slot position. Him and Bryce are battling out. Satagna and Bryce battling out that number two position there. So you mentioned Landon Jackson and Jordan Dominic flash today. Just what kind of assets can they be, and what what allows them to be? Productive? Well, I you know I I don't really know the answer to that because you know we really haven't ever gone to the ground, you know, um, but. I think they're better than they were two weeks ago, both of them, if that makes sense. You know, neither one of them played in the spring, so you're really learning about them. And I don't know how many practices today was, but I don't know, what is it? Was it 14 or something like that? So um, you kind of are learning a little bit more about them. It's like anything, until you know what you're doing, you, you really can't see a guy's athletic ability because he's always thinking all the time, and it slows him down. Um, so I think both of them are getting comfortable with the, you know, I think Barry's maybe his last install was, was on Friday, you know. But it's not the overwhelming volume that it's been before. I think the kids are starting to get comfortable with themselves in the position they are. And, and, and it takes a while to learn how we practice. I mean. It, it just takes a while, and then once you learn that and learn the expectations of practice, all that stuff is in your mind all the time. So I just think now they're relaxing and we're able to see their true athletic ability. Sam, you're a bunch of line here. I think you said something to the extent of you want to know your top eight linemen about two weeks out from the first game. Uh, who, who would those be other than the four returning guys that you have? Started? Well, Jones and then Tykees Crawford, you know, and. You know, I would say Marcus Henderson, if he was 
you know, and I would say Devin Manuel if he was healthy, but neither one of them are right now. Um, I think that they will be, you know. And then after you get to eight, then then there's, you know, there's a battle. And I'll tell you, I've liked Chambly. Chambly's done a nice job. I mean, for a young kid, he, he's, he's done a nice job. But, you know, those would probably – that would definitely be your eight. And then, you know, nine, ten – uh, you know, you're talking about St. John or Kudis, you know, at that spot. And then, uh, you know, Street would be another guy that, that and, and a Marion Harris. So after eight, we get pretty young. You know, that doesn't mean that we get bad. It just means that they're inexperienced. You mentioned your, your line speed up a little bit right now. Is that a concern or is it just kind of the normal thing that happens during this camp? Well, I don't want it to be, you know, obviously, but. Um, Camp's physical, you know, it just is. And none of them, we don't feel like any of them is going to be, we'll get some of them back next week and things that we don't think any of them won't be back by the week or hopefully by Thursday uh, when we start our Cincinnati prep. Um, I, I don't want them to be hurt, but it, right now it's not a major concern. With injuries, you always find out about somebody else because they move up a depth chart and then they play against better players and you kind of find that's what happened to Davier you know he was on the threes and then we had an injury with Miller and and some guys and he moved up and we found out that you know he can go a l little bit better than maybe what we thought against better competition so uh, I think it's going to make our team better I don't want to go into the Cincinnati game with these guys uh, beat up but we you know whenever Thursday starts, we'll, we'll get honed in. I think they'll be back and we'll be ready to go. Sam, how would you assess uh, Catalan's camp, you know, so far? Man, it's been good. You know, uh, makes a lot of plays. I don't know, he looks fast. I guess maybe he always, always looked fast, but man, he's, he looks fast. Uh, eyes are, seem to be in the right place all the time. Great leader. Him and Blair. Blair, too. Blair's had an outstanding camp. A lot of them have, but, you know, Cat's like he never missed a beat. You know, he did miss seven games, I think, last year. He missed a six, six and then the bowl game. Uh, but uh, he's very confident, leading us well, as well as Poole. And, you know, like, like I said before, we have three levels of leaders in there with Nichols and then Poole and then Catalan and, of course, Blair as well. But, uh, anytime you have three levels and three three leaders on each level, you could pretty much have a pretty accountable defense and and uh, fly around the football, which we're doing. Coach, is Latavius Brenny is he coming on some at safety? It seems like he's not thinking as much now. He's more reactive. Yeah, he's made a lot more plays. Uh, that's a good question and 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 uh, certainly true. Um, he has. He's playing faster. He's kind of like probably throw him in the same boat as J.D. and and uh, Jackson. Doing a good job. I had a question about your special team. Last week I think you were, there was some line, line up and kicking yeah. off out of bounds. Was it better today? Yes. Um, we didn't have one out of bounds. I don't know. You remember what we did on the field goals? I think we missed one maybe. Uh, two. two out of – we might have missed two out of out of nine. I guess we kicked eight field goals and maybe an extra point or two. I can't remember, but uh, I thought we just missed one. But Kyle said we missed two, so we must have missed two. Was it little or each, each, each one? All right. Uh, yesterday, Kendall said that you guys want to get your conditioning in the running on and off the field. Yeah. So when did uh, sprints at the end of practice go away? What what what's your take on that con conditioning part of things? In my mind, they went away in 1979 in, on the practice field at Grove High School. My Lord, the guy's trying to kill us. Now, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I really don't know. I don't know when it went away. Um, I'm assuming, I'm guessing here, okay, at least in my mind. A while back, you went and hauled hay. You roofed houses. You m mixed mud for Arkansas stone homes you did all this you you worked in the summer and then football started and you went to football practice and you got in shape in the four weeks before the game 
I'm not for sure if that's why you didn't run. Part of it might have been the mental toughness part of it too. I'm not for sure if that's not why you ran sprints because they didn't have any clue what you did in a summer, you know. Well, now you have an eight-week program in the summer, so you really never get out of shape, if that makes sense. Football shape is different than weight room shape, even though I think we do a wonderful job of, of position-specific drills. It's like you go from football to basketball. Y'all that know, well, we don't have a lot of athletes in here. Bob, you probably did, but from football to basketball, and you run those suicides, and you got them blisters and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, I know because I was a basketball player. And when that happens to you, you're not in that kind of shape. Well, to me, if we're busting our butt in Indy and we're, we're, we're running to the ball and we're, and we're running on off the field, we can get in shape because we never were truly out of shape, if that makes sense. So maybe that's when it started. I, I don't know. Uh, we saw set the other day with Dominion in the backfield with yeah. Rocket. Is that is that going to go anywhere? What do you think? Well, um, we like the set. You know, uh, obviously, um, depends on who we put out there with that, and more importantly, who you take off the field. You know, if you add two backs, you got to take somebody off the field. And right now, with with what we feel our wideouts are doing, it's hard to take them off the field. You know. Uh, you're either taking Knox off the field or Hazelwood or Landers or somebody that's, you know, Warren that's pretty good. So, but we do like that set, and I'm sure that we'll use it at some point. Um, any? Well, how did you come out health wise today? Any any dinged up? No, I don't. I don't. Uh, Ricky had a little bit of an elbow. Uh, Stromberg, um, I think he just had a hyperextension, but. Other than that, I can't I can't remember of anybody else that went out of the we did, we had nobody on the field. You know what I'm saying. Uh, uh, so when I walked in here, I would say nobody but Ricky. I think uh, Landon might have had a little bit of a ankle, but he's been fighting. I'm talking about Jackson. He's been fighting that ankle, but I think we came out pretty pretty healthy. School opening up and your roster being able to expand. Uh, is anybody coming back like Marcus and and what's Dominic? What's his status right now? Is he able to start practicing anytime soon? Um, well, I hope so. Um, we're going to look at him a little bit in Indy uh, starting next week, and uh, we'll just see where he is. You know, big blow to us. I mean, I think he's a great running back. I really do. I think he's a really good running back. But uh, we're going to look at him a little bit in some non-contact, see if he can do some things over bags and things like that. He's been doing it in the indoor, you know, in his rehab. He looks great. Uh, so I, I don't know, Trey, to be honest with you. I think, I think you'll probably know as much about it as I do when you come out to practice next week. You know what I mean, how, how he looks in his, in his drills. And there was somebody else you said? Uh, Marcus Miller and, you know, the Miller, you know, anybody you pulled out, I guess. Miller. Um, probably mid to late next week. Uh, same way with uh, uh, Devin Manuel. He probably he might be a week away. And then there was somebody else that's out that's 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 hurt a little bit right now. I forget who it is. Uh, Torian's out. Who? Uh, Torian. It, it, yeah, but that's going to be a minute. Marcus. Yeah, Marcus is going to start uh, doing indie. Uh, he's not going to, to do anything on live bodies until we, you know, see him in India a little bit. Uh, but we we anticipate him being ready uh, for Cincinnati. Cam Rule was in here the other day saying he'd like uh, uh, whatever twenty out of twenty four is I guess eighty seven percent. Cam Little. Yeah. He said he'd like to increase his accuracy rate to he made plus ninety and thinks if you know he hadn't kicking into a headwind he get range maybe 56 yards expand that a little bit what what do you what kind of camp has he seen and how do you as good as he was last year how could he possibly you know be in ways to be better well i guess he can make 24 out of 24. i'd be better than 20 out of 24. what's 20 out of 24. 83.3 percent huh that's just grove education baby six years of pe degree that's six years of professional PE degree at Pitt State. 
I don't. I mean, we did a deal the other day, Bob, about value, about value on the team. So value has a definition, you know. So value has a definition. Within, if you put something in front of value, elite value, some value, kind of value, a little bit of value, but you still have value. Well, I had Cam stand up and talk about his value to the team. He was the most head nod agree, agreement in the building. And I told him at that point, I think he affects the entire team because we know if we can stop them and get the ball back that we have a chance to win the game on defense. We know that if we have the ball, and we can get it anywhere close to the 35. We can win the team. We can win the game. That affects the whole thinking. Because if if you're going down there and going, we can go down here. If we don't score a touchdown, we ain't gonna make the f kick. That affects everybody. He's got unbelievable value to our team because we think he's gonna make every one of them. Sometimes he doesn't, but. I don't know how you get better in 2020. I don't know what the NFL, all that stuff is, and all that. But we we're not in a we ain't gonna trade him. I can promise you that he's got a stronger leg and been very accurate in camp. A couple more, um, Jaden Wilson and Miles Slusher. I don't think I've seen them the couple last couple. Jaden's fell down, and hurt his AC uh, in, on his shoulder in a spider practice the other day. He won't be out too long. And who Slush? No, he's fine. Slush, slush is fine. Every time, I feel like every time I turn around, Quincy McAdoo's making a ridiculous catch. Is he making it harder to keep him off the field? Yeah, I mean, we don't plan on keeping him off. You know, I mean, it's just where do you put him? You know, um, uh, he's definitely going to travel, and he's on special teams now, and uh, you know, he's certainly working his way up the depth chart. Um, uh, I think he's a really good freshman. As a matter of fact, I think Bakke, him, and Satagna are all three hits. Uh, and part of it is they're, they're tough. I call them a short wire gang, all three of them, because there's something a little screwed up up here, but I like it. In your line, is there a certain area where you've seen them improve in the last two weeks? In your what? offensive line, offensive area line. that you've seen them improve the last two weeks? Well, yeah, I think they've, I think they've improved in their pass protection. I, th I think that was a big key coming in. Short yardage, we've done better in short yardage on offense and their pass protection. You know, they've been playing together for a while now and uh, really understand each other. The other day we went into a two-minute situation and I took Ricky off the field and KJ off the field. And uh, we did it with Fortin and and uh, Bo Lemmer at center. A lot of times you got to play with somebody in that position before the game so everybody will have confidence in them and and Fortin took us right down the field and and the line protected really well and and we kicked the field goal uh, in that situation so uh, we're trying to get all different people in different spots to do that but I think we're going to be fine on the old line even you know to six and seven deep right now more than that like you said, if if we're healthy, that, that cohesion, those guys have, having played together, why is that important? And how has Luke Jones fit into that? Given that he's been with them, but had not really been in that position. Yeah, Luke Luke has played a lot of practice. If that makes sense. Luke's been at center, a left guard, a left tackle last year, all over the place. He's been a plug-in. He kind of was our plug-in guy, plug-in guy. And so, and he's one of the most popular guys in the room. You know, they love the kid. And uh, they're a very, very, very tight knit group. And so whomever's out there, they, you know, when Tykees goes out there, they're, they're all pumped up about him as well. But I don't know how you get that cohesiveness unless your position coach makes it that way in his room and the kids accept it. And to me, that's what's going on in there. With school starting back next week, what's what's next week look like? When do you start going into Cincinnati prep and stuff like that? Monday we're in shells. Tuesday we'll go full. Wednesday will be spiders. Thursday is when we start Cincinnati. That will be a Monday practice. Friday we will be in full pads. 
Saturday is a mock game, and basically what we're trying to do at that point is take the anxiety out of the guys that's never done it and show them where the locker, the, you know, where the locker room, what we do, how we stretch, and play a little bit of mock game and situations backed up, four minute, you know, things of that nature mm -hmm. next uh, Saturday. Sunday they'll be off. Monday will be a Tuesday practice. Tuesday will be a Wednesday practice. Then we'll have two Thursdays, Wednesday and Thursday. Friday's Friday, walk, and then play the game. Coach, is Bates or Little going to kick off, or do you know yet? Is that still a competition? It's a competition. Um, probably Cam's been the more consistent of the two, uh, but it's definitely a competition. For some reason, Scott wants, you know, Bates to win it. You know, he, he got to earn it, but – you know, so Cam can just concentrate on field goals. But uh, they're really, really close in there. It's just Bates had some unfortunate, you know, kicks last week kicking off. He didn't today, by the way. Coach, you said before camp started that Rocket, if he's fresh, he's going to get the majority of the carries. You still feel that way? I do. Okay. I do. Um, you know, with A.J. and, and Dominion, uh, probably about – equal in there with the with you know how many reps they're getting but rocket you know, i said in here last year said dominique was going to get more reps and he didn't you know so but i got to do better at that than when when i sit up here and tell you something um but rocket rocket is a, the the feature back i mean that's who he is and that, of course that's without dominique back and then then you we're going to have two feature backs at that point but but uh, we've got three good running backs. I, I don't. I believe in every one of them. Rock has just proved it a little bit more, and he's proven that he he needs some more reps than those other guys. We talked about some of the guys on the D line. You talked about how you wanted to get more pressure with them. Have you noticed anybody who's been getting a little bit more pressure? Terry than Hampton. Before? Okay. Hampton's hard to block. I mean, he's got built-in leverage. I mean, you got to get down there and root him out. You know, he's. Uh, Got a high motor uh, guy that has done a really good job in there. 